Hey Chopper, this viewer's not subscribed. Cardi Kaizoku. This video is sponsored by Card Market, Europe's largest online marketplace for trading card games. This video is sponsored by Sleeve Chief. There's a major restock coming for a lot of their popular sleeves, and they're going to be releasing a new Enol, Dawn Sleeve, and Hollow Sleeve as well. Use code CARDKAIZOKU for 5% off your order. Right, we're going to be doing our curve analysis for OP09 Lim, Green Purple. We've done one now for Shanks, Black Beard, Purple Black Luffy, and then we did uh, Robin. Yellow Purple Robin was our last one, so now we're doing Lim. After this, we have Buggy left, so... Hope to get all these done before 09 officially drops. But yeah, the nice thing about Lim is that I do believe all the Odyssey, which is her archetype, all the Odyssey type cards have been revealed. I don't think there's any more. So, so yeah, unfortunately, the theme of 09 is, you know, Yonko, the four emperors, and there's six colors. Two colors get left out. <laughs> they don't get a, a four emperor in, in their color in this set. And it is yellow and green. So yeah. There's no big boss monster that is yet to be revealed for Lim, I don't think. So with this curve analysis, I think it's going to be a more complete analysis of it. So without further ado, let's take a look at the leader card. So Green Purple Lim is a dual color leader with 5,000 power and 4 starting life. Her leader ability reads, your characters enter play as rested. Activate main once per turn, you may rest 3 of your dawn. If you do this, you can set one of your dawn from your dawn deck out as rested, and then you can play a 5 cost or lower Odyssey type character from your hand. So it's a leader that cheats out characters for cheap. It's kind of like how Iceberg worked, except uh, your leader can attack, right? Lim can attack, but it, it's more of a cost to cheat something else out. But 3 Dawn for 5 is still like a 2 Dawn discount, and you ramp doing this too. So like the main caveat or main like gimmick of a Lim deck is that all the characters you play come out rested, so they're able to be attacked the turn that you play them. That makes it really easy to starve a Lim out. So I guess that's the drawback from being able to play out stronger characters early and yeah uh her card pool just revolves around that five cost or lower kind of sweet spot so that does mean you're playing around the mid game a lot and then your late game will be filled with you playing out like two characters a turn akin to like how purple luffy works and yeah lim and the other character audio they're from the the uh, one piece odyssey game which i have not played so i have like no emotional attachment to this character i, I really don't even know <laughs> who she is or whether that Characters coming into play rested is like flavorful and part of her like identity in the game or not. But yeah, let's just treat this as like a card game mechanic and not put our feelings about the characters into play here. So let's take a look at the odd curve first. So odd curve will go one dawn, right? We're going first. There is no one cost Odyssey type card. So this does seem to be a turn one pass kind of deck, right? The search in this deck is a three cost, which I will show next turn. So we pass your opponent goes to two dawn. It goes back to you. So you're at three dawn now. You can start to use your leader ability actually. So at this point, you probably want to swing with your leader first. I'll even indicate now I have the power to do so. So swing leader five, and then you'll use your leader ability. Tap three dawn. I'm too lazy to tap the dawn, even though I tapped the leader. So tap three dawn to cheat out. You can cheat out a five cost, or you could just cheat out the searcher. I think early on, what would you want to do? Yeah, cheating out the searcher, I think it's probably the best play you could do on your three dawn turn anyway. So you'll cheat out the searcher, you'll, you'll draw a card to hand that's a Odyssey type character. Because what the limb searcher does is you can on play, look at the top high cards of your deck for an Odyssey type card. And then it even has an end of your turn ability. If you have three or more rested characters in play, set this character is active. But at this point, the limb will be the only one out and she does come into play rested. Then you'll ramp one rested dawn. So you'll be at four. And then it passes to your opponent's four dawn turn. And it passes back to you. I think it's worth it to protect the limb if you can. Because what you can do on your, your 6 dawn turn is, let me refresh here everything. So we go to 6, right? 6 dawn. So here you can play a 3 drop and play your leader ability to do something. And here's where you have a lot of options to use your leader ability, right? There's no like set curve. There's no like 5, 7, 9, 10 dawn kind of curve. Since uh, uh, our deck revolves around playing whatever uh, 5 cost or lower odyssey type card we have in our hand at the time. It's variable in that regard, so you'll just probably want to play like the thing that gives you the most value at that point in time. So what I would do if I had these optimal cards in hand would be to, let's see, I think we have leader ability first. So we'll 3 Dawn to leader ability out to a Sabo. We can set him up for next turn to draw cards for us, because what Sabo does is he's a 5 cost 6k power character, and then when attacking once per turn, if you have 3 or more rested characters in play, draw one card. So we're going to play out 2 characters this turn so that 
we'll have the three characters to draw with next turn. So leader ability cheats him out, you get arrested Dawn. So these four here are arrested. We ramp up to seven at this point. Then with the three remaining Dawn, if you had another limb, you could play it in search. Or if you have uh, this other three drop, Trafalgar Law. You can hard cast him for three. So that's all the Dawn for the turn. And what Law does is, three cost 4k power on play, you may return one of your characters to your hand. Then you can play up to a three cost or lower Odyssey type character other than another Trafalgar Law from your hand out into play. They make it seem like uh, you have a big pool to choose from in this deck, but it's really only this Limb Searcher, right? Limb and Law are the only three costs that we run that are worth running, I think. So you'll bounce Limb back to hand. Oh, you would have attacked with her first, so don't forget to attack first. Bounce back to hand, replayer, and then you can search again for another Odyssey type card added to your hand, and then swing with your leader if you already didn't at this point. Yeah, you want to swing before you play these two characters out, by the way. So that's our, what is this, 7 Dawn turn. We'll end the turn with 7. We start it with 6. It passes to your opponent's 6 Dawn turn. They'll do whatever they do. So, uh, oh, these two would have came out rested. Yeah, all your characters come out rested. So Law is probably going to die since he's a 4k base. Sabo is a little easier to protect. He's probably a high priority kill target too because he draws you more cards. So you'll want to expend counter to save him if you can. And then Lim, I guess you could let Lim die. You already got two searches off with her. So let's just say they're starving you at this point, right? So you want to lose characters so that eventually they'll attack into your life oh but also if you did want to like make it easier for your sabo to attack and have three rested characters you could maybe expend counters to save them but i think that would take every counter out of your hand i, th I think it might be okay to let them die at this point and you have your sabo at least you want to protect your sabo so yeah your opponent does that it's your nine dawn turn now most likely we would not have taken any life because we always had a character on board for your opponent to attack right so they can starve you really easily that is fine because we're now at nine so at 9, what we can do, again, the more Dawn we have, the more options we have. But uh, the one that I think might be the biggest impact would be to play uh, Audio for 9. What Audio does is, on play, if your leader has the Odyssey type, set up to 3 of your Dawn is active. He's a 9 cost 9k attack character, by the way. And then uh, on your opponent's attack, once per turn, you can rest one of your Dawn and buff any leader or character for 2k. Right? It's a free 2k counter for one Dawn. So we'll pay 9 to play him. So 9 are rested. And then we get three back as active. We can use our leader ability with this. And audio comes out rested too, by the way, because of our leader ability. So three Dawn, leader ability. We ramp one rested Dawn, not that it matters, but what we can play for three Dawn from our leader ability is, uh, I think Nico Robin would be pretty crucial at this point in time, right? Because your opponent goes to eight Dawn on their following turn once it passes back. So if it was like Luchi, they have access to eight cost Kakamori to, to start removing your board. Robin helps prevent that because what Robin does is four cost 5k power on play. If you have two or more rested characters in play until the end of your opponent's next turn, all of your characters with the Odyssey or Straw Hat type can't be KO'd by effects. And then since she does come out rested herself, she counts as that too, right? So you have Robin and Adio rested. Your board is immune to KO since they're all Odyssey type characters. And then at this point, you can swing with your Sabo, right? Swing with Sabo, you have no more Dawn to use, but so 6k Sabo, you have three rested characters, you draw a card, and then you can swing with your leader too. And then yeah, your board is immune to KO, they just have to be uh, defended against with counter. We won't have counter for audio to, to make a 2k counter at this point, since we tapped everything for this play. But since we let this limb and law die last turn, we should have a healthy amount of counter in hand to be able to defend this board. So yeah, passes to your opponent's 8 Dawn turn, if they had a Gekko Moria, they they may not play it. It's awkward for them, right? They can't get their Luchi combo off to kill any character on board. They can't use Kaku or anything or Shigan or Jack, right? You prevent Jack too. But against Red Purple Law, you're not as lucky because uh, Robin prevents KOs but doesn't prevent bottom decks. So be wary of that. But against every other color that doesn't have a bottom deck effect, Robin is a really strong play for this turn. So they'll do it all around with their 8 Dawn. Maybe they'll play blockers and then try to attack 8k into Sabo or something, right? He's a pretty high priority target. So... Most likely, I think Sabo will die here if your opponent is attacking the way that they should. That means your audio and Robin would most likely live. So it passes to your next turn when you're at 10 Dawn. We'll refresh real quick. And yeah, from 10 onward, it's, it's flexible. You could do a variety of different things. Just play whatever's in your hand, right? You'll always use 3 Dawn to play a bigger character out. In which case, at this point, you could play like this Luffy or something for 3 Dawn. And what this Luffy does is 5 cost 6k power on play. If you have two or more rested characters, choose up to one of your opponent's 6 cost lower characters or up to one of their Dawn and rest it. So yeah, you probably want to attack with your Robin or something first. Oops, I made her small. So attack Robin 5 first and then 3 Dawn to play out this Luffy who comes out rested himself. Then you'll rest one of your opponent's 6 cost or lower. And then yeah, you can swing audio into it, 9k. And then you still have uh, 7 Dawn to work with. So you also have like a removal option 
for a 6 ton. This can't be cheated out with your leader ability actually. 6 ton for a Sakazuki. Right, your leader ability only cheats out 5 costs or less. This one has to be hard casted. But Sakazuki is well worth it because what he does is 6 cost 7k power on play. If you have 2 or more rested characters in play, kill up to one of your opponent's 5 cost or lower characters. And yet, since we did all of our attacks already, Sakazuki can pop a 5 cost or less pretty much for free, right? You don't need to discard a card or, or anything like that. You just need rested characters, which you'll normally have anyway. Then you have one down left over. You could attack with your leader for 6 too. And yeah, that's that's kind of the curve I envision. And then the other flexible cards that you can fit into the, the slots here, right? You don't always have to play Luffy or Sakazuki or, or Robin or anything. Uh, there's Crocodile. He's a 4 cost 5k character and then uh, his card reads if your leader has the odyssey type this character cannot be KO'd in battle by leaders so this actually might be something that's good to play early on if you don't have your your searcher limb this one right if you play him out early he's rested the only thing your opponent can attack is your leader they can't attack crocodile so you do get to take life and potentially get more cards in hand so that's one valid way too if you don't want to just fill your hands with with cards with the searcher use crocodile and then uh, another option would be don quixote do flamingo five cost 6k power what Doflamingo does is he has blocker, but yeah, he does come into play rested, so be wary of that. But he does have a, a caveat where at the end of your turn, if you have two or more rested characters in play, you can set him as active. So he is not great as a, a soul card out to play, right? On your three dawn turn playing out a Doflamingo, he just comes out rested. Your opponent may just attack like 9k at him or something <laughs> just to get rid of him. But uh, on your six dawn turn, Right, you could have played out the Limb Searcher or something and then cheat out the Doflamingo. Both of these would be rested and then that activates Doflamingo's end of turn that untaps him. So you have an active blocker for yourself. So, so that's how I envision the Limb Curve to be. One of the optimal ways to play it. And again, it's situational, right? If you're if you're against like a Luchi deck, you want to get this Robin out on their 6th on turn going into 8. And you're able to do like Audio and Robin on the same turn at 9 dawn. And then, yeah, if you want to, like, attack into your opponent to starve, you play Luffy. If you want to just pop something, you play Sakazuki. If you want to defense up, you play Doflamingo. And Doflamingo is a pretty uh, good attacking body too, right? 5 cost 6k. Same as this Luffy, anyway. And then Crocodile is good for early on when you want your opponent to attack your life instead. And yeah, Limb is just great. Limb searches, fills your hand, and then Law can replay the Limb. So he's almost like a, a second copy of Limb, except that you need a Limb already on board. Let's take a look at the even curve before we get into like card options for the deck. Yeah, since we started with odd, it felt pretty strong, but let's take a look at even to see if it's any better. So we'll start with two dawn. Oops, start with two dawn. Not move my entire play mat. So yeah, we have no two dawn play, so it might be a two dawn or turn one pass kind of leader, whether you're going first or second. So your opponent goes to three dawn at this point. They'll do their thing. At this point, they will attack you, so you could get a card in in hand this way, unless they really want to starve you out. But yeah, we'll have to see if that's the optimal way to play against Lim. So it'll pass back to you on your forward on turn. You'll want to use your leader ability, I think, right? Because it'll just discount. And even if you play a three drop with your leader ability, you ramp that way. So let's say we use our leader ability, get arrested on. Hmm, what would we play? Yeah, we could either do like the limb searcher or, or the crocodile. Either one of these two. Let's, let's show crocodile this time since we saw limb last time. So there's that. And then dawn leader attack six passes to your opponent. Your opponent's five dawn turn. They'll do their five dawn thing. This crocodile is rested, but he cannot be KO'd by leaders. So if he did play a character last turn, I guess that character could attack into crocodile. But a lot of decks don't run three drop uh, 5k power characters or stuff like that anymore. Right? It's probably like a, a searcher that has 2k power or something that can't touch this croc. So more than likely, he'll not be touched. They'll attack your life again. You can take another card in hand. Then they'll do whatever they do. For five, it passes to your turn. Then you actually go to seven, seven dawn. And Croc is alive. So that's three dawn for leader ability. We'll separate the dawn here. So that ramps one. So what would we want to play? So your opponent goes to seven next turn. So we don't have to worry about eight cost Gekomoria yet. Yeah, I guess now would be a good time to set up for Sabo, which I left in the discard by accident, sorry. And then we have four dawn left over. I guess if we have a, if we had a second Croc, we could play him out, hard cast him. Or we could just play out like a limb and then search. That's three dawn. If we have one dawn left over, we could swing with our leader for five. Yeah, Limb is probably our only option if we want to hard cast something other than another croc, that is. So that's that turn. It passes to your opponent. They're at seven. They'll do their seven dawn. These are all rested. So, well, actually, since you have three rested characters now, Limb untaps. So maybe she wouldn't have died. Maybe just Law would have died. But yeah, we'll move on to this scenario since I already <laughs> missed that in the, in the odd curve. So croc can't be attacked by leaders. The character might try to attack into it. They'll probably just try to kill the Sabo. But yeah, since we took two life, we probably have the counter necessary to protect them. 
So I'm going to assume all our characters are going to live, right? We'll just counter the hell out of Sabo. So it passes back to you. You're on your, what Dawn is this? 10 Dawn now, right? All right, let me verify the Dawn. So we, we were at four, ramping to five, and then seven ramping to eight. Yeah, and then it would be 10 as I make this Dawn look pretty. So 10 Dawn, I guess we could do like audio for nine. And that gives us three active Dawn back. So we have four to work with. We have our leader ability. So three Dawn to play out. Now Robin would be relevant because they're going to go to nine. They could play their Gekko Moria or something like that. We have, we have Dawn left over to use our audio's effect this time. Where, we're, where if, when your opponent attacks once per turn, you could tap this Dawn to counter 2k for anything, character or leader. And yeah, at this point, audio would be rested. Robin would be rested. You could attack with character limb, attack with your character croc, Sabo attacks. You have like five rested characters at this point, so he draws you a card. And then leader attacks too. So that's the even curve. And then at that point after that, you just play Luffy's and Sakazuki's and blockers as you need them. Okay, hmm. I actually think I like the odd curve more, right? It felt more intuitive because you're playing that Robin out before their 8 Dawn turn and everything leading up to 9 Dawn with audio felt like it made a lot of sense. So that was the curve. Let's talk about card options as I reset the board here for when I have to do my buggy one. I don't have to redo it from scratch. So the awkward thing kind of is that you only want to run Odyssey type characters in this deck but if you fill the deck with all the available like good ones which is what i showed on screen yeah, let me bring them all back out all these guys it only makes up 36 cards if you run a full play set of everything so you still got to fill out like 14 cards to make a 50 card deck and yeah it's kind of slim pickings for what else you can put in the deck let me make space to show what i think should go in the deck so there's like a promo audio card he is an odyssey type character but he's not in op09 uh i think the only way to get him is if you pre-order the the like remastered version of one piece odyssey or like the what is it called when all the dlcs are unlocked like the premium edition master edition whatever you get this as a pre-order bonus i don't know if that's only in japan or if it's in english too but yeah this card is going to be like convoluted to get but he's a 2k counter in in this archetype it's a really relevant oh but there is an 09 2k counter right there's an ace card let me go over what ace does he's five cost 5k power 2k counter and then on play if you have two or more rested characters you can rest one of your opponent's five cost lower characters so just him being uh five cost means you can cheat him out but yeah it's three down for 5k power which is not bad right, vanilla stat line and he's a 2k counter at the end of the day and he has a good on play right if you have two other rested characters he himself comes out rested so he counts you can tap a five cost or lower that's uh like a little worse than this luffy but you know it's still a 2k counter so he's a lot more flexible so that's our 2k counter options we would probably want to run 12. So if you have access to audio, it'd be audio ace, and then I guess maybe like Usohachi or something from the new purple starter deck. Uh, what he does is three costs, 3k power, 2k counter on play. If you have eight or more Dawn, when you play him, you can rest a five cost or less. So all three of these rest five costs. Actually, what does audio do? <laughs> I didn't, I don't remember what he did. Hold on one second. Oh, sorry. So this audio, if you have two or more Odyssey type rested characters, he gets plus 1000 power. So he's uh, four cost 6k. Vanilla stat line character. It's uh, Usohachi and Ace that tap. And the reason I thought that there were three 2k counters that tap is my recommendation if, if you can't get this audio would be to play Izo instead, which is three cost 3k power and he can tap a uh, uh, four cost or less if you can't get the Odyssey promo. So yeah, all these three tap characters on play. Good for starving your opponent or getting rid of blockers. But yeah, Usohachi and Izo are not Odyssey type characters though, so they aren't searchable and you can't cheat them out. Not that you would want it though, because they're three cost anyway. So you just hard cast them for the same price. Did I count that right? 4, 8, 12, 16, 20, 24, 28, 32, 36. Yeah. So plus 4 makes this uh, 40. And then another 4 makes this 44. And this makes it 48. So you have room for two more cards in your deck. So with the remaining slots, I guess you could run like 10 cost Do Flamingo. Right, he's 10 cost, 10k power, and on play, you can pick three of your opponent's uh, rested characters or leaders. They don't untap during the next refresh phase. It's an on play ability, so it doesn't matter if this character himself is rested or not. Because yeah, he also has to listen to our leader ability where he does come into play rested. But you get the value out of Doflamingo being able to freeze three things, and then it's not going to be easy for them to attack into a 10k character anyway. So that could be a two of, or you could mess with the ratios a bit. I'd say uh, this croc would be something you could potentially like run two of or three of to make room for like a full play set of doflamingos if you want and then another option would be uh, a zero cost 3k counter card so we have green and purple options so uh whoever wins the war is justice whatever the green one is called it's a long ass name 
That one, I think I would recommend this one over the purple one, the Jet Gatling. They both do the same thing, except the triggers are different. The green one lets you rest a 4 cost or less as a trigger. The purple one ramps you a dawn. Since our leader ability ramps us a dawn every turn, I don't think that as, is as relevant. So the marginal benefit uh, makes the green one a little better, being able to just rest a 4 cost that you can attack into or something like that. And then, yeah, if you didn't want to run a 4 up of everything and you wanted to fill uh, some space in the deck, I think queen would be a valid option too. Just for the card draw and the fact that we're ramping every turn that minus dawn from from our queen isn't as devastating it doesn't synergize with anything in, anything in our deck but it does draw us more cards which um we kind of need since we can get starved pretty easily your opponent will never attack your life and try to get rid of your characters queen helps you find more counters from your deck and i think that pretty much covers everything for Lim. there's really not too much wiggle room in this deck because all the support in this deck is in this set itself plus the promo from the odyssey pre-order but yeah, does that make Lim strong? Well, Lim is strong against other decks that depend heavily on like 5 and 6 costs. Because this Luffy taps the 6 cost and then Sakazuki can KO it. And then, the, where is that audio? The 2k audio. Oh no, Ace. The 2k Ace taps a 5 cost or less too. So a lot of interaction having to deal with 5 and 6 costs from your own deck and your opponent's deck. And yeah, Lim, Lim is kind of a swarm deck, right? You're playing two characters out. And that's what makes makes Kalgara strong. Yellow Kalgara from 08. But Kalgara does make you take your own life. So you, you're never like out of card resources in hand. And his leader ability only costs one Dawn to cheat out another character. And you can cheat up to a six cost. And there's some like micro combos within his deck, right? They have Kalgara into Norland that heals them alive. So they don't lose anything at all. They just get to draw a card and play out two characters. There's also the Om Holy combo that they have access to. There's nothing like that in, in this green odyssey cycle of cards the only like cheeky combo is like law into uh, into limb law into limb lets you draw quite a lot of cards if you're able to replay limb with law a couple times but other than that yeah i'm just trying to think if you're going against like an enol or something or like even a lot of the o other 09 leaders seem to like just play into like top end right shanks plays into like white beards 10 cost shanks uh, uh silver's really stuff like that once they get to that point, your, your characters can't really interact with them. Same with Blackbeard, it gets to 10 cost Blackbeard himself or like the 7 cost Jack. You can't interact with those. Even Buggy, Buggy's got a new 10 cost boss monster too, which I'll go over. He re was revealed right on time for me to <laughs> go over his curve next. But yeah, his deck is all about cheating 5 cost or greater characters out. So at the minimum, you can interact with them, but once it gets to like the 7 and above, you can't really do anything about those cards. Purple Black Luffy ramps, so yeah, he just gets to his top end, so you can't interact with that deck either. I guess, like, Robin? No, even Robin gets to late game and just plays, like, Yamatos and, and Aces and stuff and heals. So I don't know. Lim does seem good against Red Purple Law, if that matters. And it, it kind of feels like Lim can overwhelm a, a Luchi. If you just get that perfectly timed Robin, you'll have, like, a, a board of three to four characters that are immune to KO that you can swing with. So against, like, the 08 current meta, 8.5 kind of, she seems like she could do well, but once it hits OP09 and the other 09 leaders see play, I don't know, it just seems like she doesn't do well against them on paper, just in my head, thinking this out loud. Could be different in reality, but yeah, that's just what I think. So is she good? I don't know, she kind of feels conditional, right? She counters some decks, but she is useless against other decks. So because of that, since she doesn't have like a generic kind of matchup spread, I don't think Lim will be meta, but it would be a fun pet deck. Yeah. That's my impression of Lim at the moment. And there's no opportunity for any more surprises, I don't think. I think this is all we're going to get for Odyssey. So yeah, we kind of know how she's going to play. So yeah, that's my thoughts on it. What do you guys think? Do you think Lim is sleeper OP actually and I'm missing something? Let me know. Educate me and then I'll propagate that correct information going forward when I talk about Lim. You know, I have the capability to learn, right? I'm a learning machine. And yeah, if you like this video, if you like me doing these curve analyses, analyses, I'll keep doing them. I'll do it for OP010 too. OP10? O10? And whatever new starter decks too. I like doing these. They're kind of fun to, to kind of predict how the decks will play. Yeah, if you like this kind of video, like, comment, subscribe. It would be much appreciated. And thanks for watching. Bye. Cardi Kaizoku.